As the people were filled with expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but the one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Now, when all the people were baptized and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heaven was opened and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, you are are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. This is the gospel of the Lord. Well, grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. This week I've been thinking a lot about beginnings. It seems appropriate this after we've finished this first full week of 2016. So I guess let me ask, how's two, 2016 going for people? <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, good. That's good, a mixture of emotions and feelings. That's good. Because, you know, I've always heard that it's important to start good, to have a good start in whatever you do. You know, sports teams talk about starting fast and starting strong. Presidents are measured by their first hundred days. Couples begin their married life together with a celebration and then going off to a honeymoon. And I think, I can't think of a better way to start your week than coming to worship. To be fed and nourished by the word of God and through communion. See, beginnings can set the tone for the rest of the week. And they also have the power to carry you through rough patches along the way. My mom knew the beginning of, of, of good beginnings, knew the power of, of good beginnings. I thought of it this week. When I was a child, I remember her waiting with me at the bus stop. And when the bus would arrive, she would kind of do what parents do. They give you the hug and say, I love you. And then, you know, then I would start boarding the bus. And occasionally she would say, as I was getting into the bus, she would go, oh, and remember, I'm proud of you. Now, I have to admit, I was a little bit embarrassed by all of that, but it also made me feel good. Because to hear those words as I was disappearing into the bus, I knew that before I had done anything that day, my mom was proud of me. 
Whether I had a good day or a bad day at school, I knew that my mom was proud of me. No matter what lay ahead, my mom was proud of me. And in our gospel lesson, Jesus experiences, I think, the power of a good beginning too. You may not realize this, but regardless of their other differences, the synoptic gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, all agree that before Jesus did anything in his public ministry, he was baptized. Before he did anything, and that's why we begin the season of Epiphany every year with Jesus' baptism. Because it was the foundation for everything that came after. Before Jesus heals anyone or casts out demons, Jesus is baptized. Before the light of Christ begins shining in the world and Jesus reveals himself as who he is, Jesus is baptized. Before Jesus teaches in the synagogue and is almost killed in his hometown for proclaiming the gospel and confronts the religious leaders of the day before he was betrayed and handed over, Jesus hears, you are my son, my beloved. With you I am well pleased. It's this baptism, this beginning that propels Jesus into his future and gives him the strength and courage to stay grounded throughout his public ministry. It's almost like right before he begins and after he's baptized, God says, remember, I'm proud of you. I, I randomly do this thing with uh, Ella, my oldest, where she's doing something, I get her attention. I say, come here, I've got a secret. Of course, kids love to, you know, secrets. So she comes to me and I pick her up in her arms and I whisper into her ear, I love you. And I've done this so often or so, so much now that she always looks at me. She, she pulls herself back and goes, Dad, I know that secret. <laughs> and I always reply, and I hope you never forget And we also, before we leave each other and before we go to bed, our family does this ritual where we make the sign of cross on our foreheads and we say, Jesus loves you and so do I. We want to drench our kids in this love, in this foundation. And so as we begin Epiphany, as we begin this new year, I want us all to have a good beginning. In the waters of baptism, God tells us a secret. Just like with Jesus, God calls us by name and says, you are my son, you are my daughter, the beloved with whom I am well pleased. In spite of all our faults and failings, God is well pleased with you. Regardless of what this year might bring before you do anything, whether it is going to be a good year or a bad year, God is proud of you. Ultimately, that's what the entire earthly mission and ministry of Jesus was. To bring the love of God to those who felt it the least. To remind all people that God is proud of them. That while there might be some actions that are pleasing to God, God is fundamentally proud of God's kids. But more than that, God raised Jesus from the dead to prove that God's love knows no boundaries and nothing is stronger, not even death. So we see this truth in God's words in Isaiah when God says, I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. Through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned and the flame will not consume you. This is the fundamental good news for today and every day. God is well pleased with each and every one of us. Now, 
because it sounds all gushy. This does not mean that we never do anything wrong or we are sinless or never break a commandment. This does not mean that we all don't do things, as we say in my family, things that make Jesus cry. <laughs> this doesn't mean that we aren't daily in need of God's grace and God's forgiveness. It simply means that despite of all that, God still loves you and will always love you. That is why we have communion every Sunday. So we can feel and taste the presence of God and the love of God deep within us. And I think there is no better beginning than that. To know before anything happens, before you succeed or before you fail, God is well pleased with you. God says to you every minute of every day, you are my son, my daughter, the beloved with whom I am well pleased. And that is why if you've noticed, and if you haven't, there's a slip of paper in every bulletin with those words, you are my son, daughter, the beloved with whom I am well pleased. And I want, and this is a message we need to hear routinely. So I want you to get that slip of paper. I want you to take it home. I want you to put it on your mirror in, in your bathroom. I want you to put it in your wallet. I want you to put it over the coffee pot. Whatever and wherever you are going to see it on a daily basis. Or if you want to hide it, put it in your wallet. I know me, I don't always go in certain parts of my wallet and I'll randomly go, what is this? And pick it out. To hear and see every day when you begin your day that God is in love with you. And God is well pleased with the core of who you are. Regardless of what anybody else says to you, or regardless of how anybody else treats you, God is well pleased with you. So I want you to read those words. Say those words to yourself every morning before you walk out that door. So, you can re so we can rehear those fundamental words in which we live and breathe and have our being. And so you can have a good beginning to every day of this year. And remember that God is proud of you. Amen. Young girl dress